Hello and welcome back to the Pro-Am podcast. I am the amateur side and I am Paul O'Dea. And of course, on the pro side, as always, we have Brian the Pikeman Moore. How are you doing this week, Brian? Yeah, all good, Paul, man. Looking forward to breaking, well, to reviewing and making some predictions of what happened in 257. But uh, yeah, all good on my end. Very good. And of course, this week is a little bit different. We don't have any fights this week. So we are going to look back at that UFC 257 card. And instead of giving normal fight predictions, we're going to predict who we see next for some of the big winners and some of the losers on that card. So what did you make of the card overall? Yeah, overall, the card was a huge success. Obviously, I was disappointed for Conor not getting the result that he worked so hard for, but that's the fight game. But as a fan, you know, we got to see some tremendous fights. Both myself and yourself, we knew. We, we spoke about it the last time, about um, how the main event, how the co-main event, how exciting they were going to be, and they, they lived up to that. And the fights right down through the card were exceptional too. So fight fans won for sure. Another successful card in the in the books. Yeah. And of course, we have to look back at our predictions that we've made so far. Not going so well, we? Brian. Not going so well. <laughs> so <laughs> if you are following myself and Brian's predictions and bets so far, you're doing real poorly as myself and Brian are. I believe we're both four and eight overall. And just another couple of small predictions that we made. Yeah, we've four winners and eight losers overall, both of us. So, That's almost as bad as your amateur record, Paul. <laughs> Not quite. There's still a couple of wins on there <laughs> on that side. <laughs> Look, it's been a bit of a mad start, hasn't it? Like yeah. nobody could have predicted whatever about last week. Okay, last week yeah. was 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 nuts, but the week before was just out there. Last week we seen Poirier underdog. Many people are questioning why he was the underdog, but you know he came in and he and he came in and got the great performance. You had Chandler who. I thought caused the upset many people didn't think was going to be the upset. We all knew it was going to be a close fight. There were many factors how it could have played out, but yeah. there were two huge wins. The both men rose to the occasion and got the wins. But um, you know, yeah, look at it'll take. We'll, once we get the ball rolling, Paul, we'll be. We'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll definitely sure. get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. I do want to just nod to your uh, your main prediction last week, which I was to believe that you said that Chandler and Hooker was going to be a contender for fight of the year. Maybe knock out of the year. <laughs> um, just look at that. Look at that knockout. It was beautiful. You've got Hooker, who's this tall, rangy, long guy. Um, who's not very... He, he does a lot of fainting, and he doesn't bite on many feints. He's one of these very cool, calm, and collected. Chandler being this explosive athlete, kept level changing and kept throwing that right hand low to the body. The last combination, the one that landed, he threw that right hand to the body, would step forward, was shifting in with his left hook and almost took the head off Dan Hooker. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. But talk about a man who looked loose and confident in there on such a huge stage. You know, the pressure was on his shoulders and he, he rose to the occasion and he, he came home with the, with the big win. Yeah. And I suppose, look, we, we might as well start in the main event before we get into that fully. Um, mm. as you touched on an absolute amazing performance by Dustin Poirier and obviously both it con- connected somewhat with McGregor yourself being a teammate of him it's a tough one to see for any Irish fan to see McGregor go out like that first TKO loss um, mm-hmm. but the flip side of that is I said it on one of our podcasts last weekend that I don't, I don't believe there's a person in Ireland that isn't a fan of Dustin Poirier and Dustin Poirier has been there for how long and it's still good to see him in that position. You wish it wasn't against McGregor and he didn't, do you know what I mean? But it, it was still phenomenal to see him get that victory in that fashion, kind of a, a cap to the work that he's put in over the last five to six years. Um, so what, what I suppose, what did you make of Dustin Poirier's performance in and of itself? And do you believe that it was more down to the game plan from the coach or do you just think he, he, he it, it was on the fly and that he was just waiting to be in the pocket with McGregor. Yeah, well, look at going back to for what you first said about uh, you know, people being happy for Dustin, the kind of the kind of man he is. He's a very charitable man. He's a very humble man. He's been in there time and again. He's had his ups, he had his downs, and you know, he I know he won the interim belt, and then he fell short against Khabib, and for him to pick up a win of this magnitude, you know, it, it couldn't happen to him. A better guy, although he did, you know, beat Connor, who, who's a, uh, you know, he's Connor McGregor. He's he's he flies the flag for us so proudly. You know what I mean? So look, yeah. it's, I'm not. I wouldn't say that I'm 
<laughs> happy for Dustin <laughs> because he beat Tina, but I, but I am sweet. on the same breath. He's yeah, exactly. He's a, he's an honest and and good guy, a real fighter. So I I, I think. You know, if there's anyone in the division that should rise and, and not be Connor, it'll be him. But Connor will be back. Connor, we'll talk about that. Connor will be back. But in the sense of performance, I thought his his uh his game plan was was fantastic. I do think they planned for it. Yeah. Um, Connor was having some early success with the hands, so you could see that he was kind of putting transferring more weight onto his front foot to to box and more. So by by targeting that the peroneal nerve, by targeting that calf kick. Um, it is. It, I, I know for a fact uh, how 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 scaldy they can be. They're, they, you look at Connor and you can you see this amazing left hand, but shift your eyes lower and look at his feet. His footwork is phenomenal. So any way yeah. to try and slow that man's feet, you're going to gain an advantage. Uh, I I learned almost the hard way myself in my last fight. I took some leg kicks and they were pretty much unanswered. And literally since that date, every single day I've been working hard on on evading them and and checking yeah. and getting out of the way of them, but. It, they are there's something not to be messed with and they're coming in more and more frequent so it was a great game plan i think mike brown uh was the one who came up with that you had tiago alves who's a world-class leg kicker and himself in the corner too so i'm sure it was something they had um planned out from the get-go it wasn't just on the fly yeah definitely and i do want to touch on as well that dustin's chin like it's not as though that mcgregor didn't land mcgregor landed a couple of times and he landed some decent left hands no, they weren't his his put away shots at the same time, but he, he had some power behind him, and they were good shots. Um, Poirier's yeah. chin held up, and, and and this talk of that he moved up. I I touched on our podcast last week that I thought the difference would be that when McGregor hits him, that he wouldn't be able to take it. Um, perhaps yeah. that fifty five being his weight, he seemed far more capable and more comfortable taking that those few shots. Than he did in their first fight. Now uh, I know it's different. It was one shot, and it's where it hit him, and all, and there's other factors involved. But he did look far more comfortable under fire. Yeah, his 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 cut to one forty five was extreme, and I don't think he cut it the most intelligently back then either. But um, he does look more comfortable. His body looks better. His chin looks better. His performances are better. It's his weight class. Some guys do very well when they cut. Others don't. We know what kind of a guy Poirier. Now, in saying that, when he's at 145, he was a beast as well. Yeah. Just 155 just is his own. Um, he is better there. Um, Connor did crack him. He did crack him. And it was just, the, the knockout looked like it was coming. It looked like it was coming. And there was a couple of times where he had him hurt where I don't usually... Usually Connor's is uh, one of the best killer instincts in the game, and yeah. he didn't seem like he pressed as much as he usually did. Maybe it was in his mind to try and drag the fight out that little bit longer, like he spoke about in the press conference, or maybe he didn't acknowledge they had hurt him. But um, yeah, I, that's why I'm so intrigued to see a rematch. I would love to see a rematch, but uh, yeah, his chin is better. It is better at, at 155 for for sure. I think what you mentioned there about not pressing it when he did have him a little bit hurt. I think a, li- a little bit of that was that was at a stage of the fight where his leg was already very much compromised and and maybe his movement was hindered at that point and moving on moving forward with the punches he normally flows forward with punches I think he was hindered at that point maybe that's the reason that we didn't see the same killer instinct out of him perhaps and that that could well be the reason more than likely is the reason those calf kicks they don't look like much they, yeah. I guarantee there was many people who looked at that fight that didn't really acknowledge what was going on as in that's only a kick, it's only a calf kick, it's only a leg kick. But trust me, I'd per- I'd probably prefer to get a punch straight in the nose than take one of those calf kicks. They are not to be messed <laughs> with, and they they can change your game plan all of a sudden instead of taking that step in and your distance is off and your shot is gone and they're not to be messed with. You're going to see a lot more people throwing them. They're they're already coming be, becoming more popular, but in a fight of that magnitude when it yeah. did affect one of the greatest fighters of all time. You're going to see it being thrown a hell of a lot more. Yeah, and definitely. That should be something people are practicing and avoiding too. A hundred percent. Um, I, I, I'm going to push you. I suppose our picks of the week, as we as we said, are going to be who we see that uh, uh, certain fighters fighting next. So for your first pick of the week, it's Dustin Poirier versus who? And the big question here, of course, is: Is it for the lightweight title? You know, it's so funny because if someone was to give me your what's your dream job, I would say matchmaker. I'd love yeah. to be a matchmaker. Do you know what I mean? It's just well, right now I probably would not like to be a matchmaker because there's too many there's too many choices. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like that, who, that's a good who, problem and, to and have for the see, UFC, though. That's a great problem to have for the UFC. Like 
You look at Poirier, what makes sense? Okay, Charles Oliveira had an outstanding performance. He's on a tear. He's been in the UFC for for a long, long time. Um, he's probably the one that makes the most sense to, to jump up now and, and have a fight with Poirier and make it for the belt. However, Poirier is interested in the McGregor rematch. Connor's drawing power, former two-time world champion, and there's going to be another another narrative to this story too if you give them the rematch. Yeah. So this is the problem with the that matchmakers have right now. You know what I mean? Other people are asking Chandler. They're saying, yeah, give Chandler the, the he went out and he performed, but yeah. Dustin isn't wanting that fight. So I think Dana is. So okay, what I would want, what I want to see is Connor uh, and Poirier in the rematch. That's what I want to see. I think it'll be a different outcome. I think it'll be a fantastic fight. I think it'll be massive pay-per-view even more than what I've done last Saturday. But I, I think what makes more sense, if you're looking at like rankings and, and, and on runs and, um, and who's on a, on a tear, I think Charles Oliveira just appear Poirier for the lightweight belt makes probably the most sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with the, the, the Oliveira pick. Um, I, 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 I do believe McGregor, if McGregor had been the champion at that time and he had lost, I, I, I agree with the pick that it, a rematch is warranted. But because of the implications of the next bout and that it most likely will be for a title, I think you're pissing off too many people in the division by making the rematch yeah, automatically. We see Poirier can't not fight for a belt next. It yeah. would be unfair to the man after beating one of the greatest fighters of all time to not give him a belt next. Yeah. But agree. can you give him the rematch against Connor for the belt when one of, when Connor is coming off off a loss? So yeah. you have that factor in. But I think based on his history, based on the icon that he is, based on the performances that he's put on, I think for me it makes sense. But of course, I am biased. So yeah. But um, if you're looking at the people, the 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 performances as as of late. Charles Oliveira blew, blew me away with his performance against Tony Ferguson. So yeah. Ferguson, I'm sorry, Oliveira versus Poirier for the lightweight belt makes all the sense in the world to me right now. Yeah, I'm the same. So for me, it is Charles Oliveira as well versus Dustin Poirier, and it is for the title. But I can see, like you said, the UFC giving Dustin Poirier an option. I can see them saying yes. it's Oliveira for the title or it's McGregor. Mm -hmm. And there's another two. You're a number one contender match for either Oliveira versus Gaethje or Oliveira versus Chandler for the title mm. but I think obviously in that in that scenario Dustin is going to pick the title yeah well look at there's another factor as well Dana White is really hung up on Khabib coming back so yeah. the longer they drag that out and don't crown a new champion the more chances Khabib is going to come back and and and, and fight so maybe they'll run Poirier and McGregor back to give Poirier his big another big payday Conor will get have a chance to get revenge and yeah. then maybe put the likes of Chandler versus Gaethje or someone like that to to fill to, to keep the, those guys happy too so there's many ways this can play out but if, um, if I was matchmaker and if I had to predict what was next it's uh, it's Oliviera versus uh, Poirier like I said but what do you think of Chandler perhaps and Poirier for the belt a lot of people are talking about that so I don't I don't like it I don't, I don't think he's earned that yet now, uh, as impressive as the performance was, it's still a guy that was ranked sixth coming off a loss. Now, I said before this bout that this was a litmus test for Michael Chandler to see where he is in the division. He has proven that he's worthy of a top five opponent. I don't think that was ever really in question, that he was worthy of that level of opponent, but it could have easily been a more difficult fight, as we've said. I yeah. just think people are a little bit hung up on the fact that it was such a quick finish against such a tough opponent to finish. And that's the reason that they're, they're, they're clamoring for him now, that there's, there's an element of people clamoring him for a title shot. I think one more against someone like a Gaethje, someone like a Charles Oliveira of that ilk, I think he, he, he's worth the shot then. But I, I, I think it's, it's a little bit too soon to be putting him in there for a strap right now. So what are your predictions? Are we going to move on to the next one? Are we going to give... Are we going to go on to the Chandler Hooker fighter? Do you want to keep? Do you want to? No, we, we'll, we'll go. Poirier? We'll go with the winners. We'll go with Char uh, with Chandler next. Who who do you see next for okay. Chandler? And 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 what do you make of his performance? First off, I suppose. Okay, phenomenal performance. Like I said, like I broke down his knockout, but his what really impressed me about him is that man could have came in with the weight on his shoulder. He's he's coming over from Bellator. 
you know, there's always the question of uh, of how would a Bellator champ get on in the UFC, and he showed what you know uh, how the promotions are neck and neck. Um, but the weight was on his shoulders coming in. There was a lot of uh, hype behind him, and he was put in against a, a, a boogeyman for all the yeah. want of a better phrase in in Dan Hooker. But yeah. What impressed me was his performance, how loose he was. He looked so calm, so relaxed in there. He looked like he was sparring, but with intent. Um, and like I said, the way he was changing levels, the way he was moving, he, there was he was he was flowing, and the knockout was just beautiful. It was I, I'm I'm sure they 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 had taught and had planned out that shot. Yeah. But again, just look at the execution of where his right foot lands as he's thrown to that left hook. It's it's something else. And you're talking against against the guy Hooker, who was who sees this small, stocky, athletic guy who's probably wondering about the takedown and he comes upstairs with a left hook. But Hooker's a world class striker. And to get to get to get a knockout over Hooker, I know you're talking about he's number six. Hooker's ranked six and coming off a loss. Yeah. But I remember the last time Hooker has been finished in that kind of style before. He's only been Davis finished Davis. once before. That was Edson Barbosa. Yeah, yeah, that was a good. Fight. Yeah, so he really, you know, kicked down the doors with that uh, with that performance, and I think based on that performance, he deserves a hell of a fight next. Yeah. So I know who I want him to fight next. Who I'd love to see him fight next. But what do you what do you make of his performance uh, before we do that? Yeah, I, I look. There, there aren't enough superlatives to describe his performance. It was almost perfect, um, and to get him out of there, there that quickly as well. There's a lot of emphasis on a finish, but to go out and smoke mm. a guy that is very hard and very hard to get to so quickly <clears throat> kind of shows the attitude he's coming in with as well, and he's kind of backing up all the talk because he has come in quite vocal into the promotion. But for me, what 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 kind of won him? favor on on the card was everything about his performance obviously but outside of that the walk in the and when he grabbed the mic although it was very wwe and 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 i can't, it just makes me kind of um squeamish or something i don't know there's something about that kind of cringe for, cringe yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> it's it's forced and it's a little bit but at the same time he mentioned connor connor he mentioned dustin and he mentioned Khabib. He called out the main three. Like he mm. could have easily gone in and and shouted shit at Connor and shouted shit at Khabib, and missed a massive opportunity. But he didn't do that. I just think he sold himself very well on the mic. And there's been a lot of talk about that after the fact. And this is maybe the reason that there's more of a push than there would be for him to get a title shot. But I think he did everything right. Yes. Go on. I I think you're dead right, and I think the WWE his call out, but. I'm pretty sure Chael Sonnen said this before. Uh, if I, if me- maybe my memory is a little bit fucked, but when you get the opportunity to call someone, you call one person. You don't call three people out because it gets mixed. You know, when you when you put your target on one guy's back, um, and you and you know it, it's it doesn't get diluted. It doesn't get it, you have that focus on one person, and the narrative is then there yeah. for yeah. people to cling to. But he's mentioning like fighter A, fighter B, fighter C, and people are now wanting to see him fighting fighter A, B and C rather than just either fighting the champ, fighting the big money fight, which is Connor. You yeah. know, so you know, I don't think he was a missed opportunity at all. Like you said, he promoted himself fantastically. Yeah. He, he you know, lead up to the fight, post fight, send the performance and it, I'm all about performance and that was just phenomenal. Yeah. So I'd love to see him in a big fight next. And quick I'd like to see a quick turnaround too. Yeah. The one thing I would say though about calling out three people and normally I would completely agree with you is this is one of the few scenarios where there's a lot of unknowns there. It was just before the Conor Dustin fight. So if he'd have called out the wrong person, he shoots himself in yeah. the foot. And you have Khabib mm. hanging around there with a massive question mark. That's the reason I completely yeah. agree with you. Under normal circumstances, pick your man and go with it. But I just think it was the perfect run off the three names, give your reasons why. And put yourself in the discussion with all three, giving yourself the yeah. best chance to be in, in the conversation. Yeah, like if he'd went and called out um, Habib, I think Habib was just waiting for Connor to win. I think that was the only way he was going to come back. Personally, yeah. that's what I think. I don't think he's any interest in coming back to fight anybody else. If he'd called out Connor, well, 
Connors are coming off a defeat, so he's not going to get a crack at the belt. Now they're not going to make him and Connor for the belt. And if you called out Poirier and Poirier had lost, that's not you know that's a tough, tough fight with not too much to gain from from where he already is after that knockout. So yeah, um, I do get yeah, yeah, that's a very, very good point. But um, maybe you should just call out Nate Diaz or something. <laughs> Skip all those three. <laughs> Very true. So, uh, who 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 do you see next for Tendler? Who's your pick? Okay, so I'm in agreement of maybe not giving him the, a, a crack at the belt straight away. Mm. Um, I'd like to see him in there one more time. And why not give him someone who's challenged for the belt only recently and give him Justin Gagey. Yeah. Two hard-working blue-collar Americans, two excellent wrestling pedigrees, two excellent strikers. Two tough guys. I think this would be a, a hell of a fight. A hell of a fight. Maybe I was wrong to say Hooker and Chandler would be fight of the year, but I'm sure if <laughs> yeah. Chandler and Gagey in there, I, I would I have a feeling that it, it would. Um, that it would be so many ways that can play out. Yeah. I, I can't wait to break If that happens, I can't wait to break it down because yeah. right, you've got two guys who've got great wrestling. Uh, uh, Gagey's got excellent defensive wrestling while Chandler's excellent offensive and defensive both are good strikers in their own right but the key thing that I kept thinking about was these kicks that Gaethje throws and Chandler's uh, leg against Primus that time when he got hit with yeah. peroneal nerve and the foot wouldn't uh, stay um, flexed um, it would be to be just so much to talk about but I'd like to see that fight I think that's a great fight and a win for Chandler yeah he gets the next title shot a win for Gaethje he gets right back in the mix there. Yeah, I'm, I'm again full of grains. My pick as well is Gaethje, and I think there's something to the fact that they were champions outside from another promotion as well. I think they've mm, done this once before, and it, it built up for a big fight because it it, it was at Eddie Alvarez versus uh, Gaethje that time, and it worked quite well. Oh, that yeah. dynamic of Bellator champion versus World Series champion. And it worked, yeah. so I I just think it would be similar to that in that sense, and especially the fact it's stylistically it's a it's a great matchup, but I I think it's, it, it's an easy sell as well. And um, we, we're going to move on to some of the losers now. Um, and uh, we might start with Dan Hooker. What do you see next for Dan? It's kind of a tough one. Two losses, finished quite early. Um, he was six. You would imagine he's going to move down those rankings. He'd probably still be in the top ten, but. It's a tough loss this time. What did you make of the performance? What what was there of it on the night? Look, the man, he, he got caught cold. You know, there's yeah. no two ways about it. The, the, the first opening sequences of a fight are where you're trying to know tendencies and and see which way your opponent is moving, etc. He was he was he looked very relaxed getting in there as he always does. Um, maybe he was expecting a different look from from Chandler, but he just he got. He got caught by the better man than I. Simple as that. Yeah. He's been around a long time. He'll he'll live from it. I'm sure he'll, he'll grow from it. Um, I just hope he gets into a good mindset to come back strong because Dan Hooker is an animal. And yes, he's after losing his last two, but look, we lost it. He's, yeah, he's yeah. losing to the upper echelon, the cream of the crop in the 155 pound division. So there's no, it's a fight. You know what I mean? It's it's these things happen. And yeah. when you're when you're putting yourself continuously against top level guys, losses do come. Yeah. So. There's a lot of great fights for him. Um, what I think they'll do is they'll, I think they'll do Hooker versus Makachev. I think that would be a really good fight because you got Hooker, who's, yep, he's two losses down, but you've Makachev, who's, is, uh, you know, there's a lot of eyes on him, uh, especially in, in Russia. And I think him breaking into the, the top and elite of the division, he needs to be one of these guys, such as a Dan Hooker. But as a fan, I would love to see. Hooker versus Ferguson. I think both lads coming off of two losses each, two long, lanky 155ers with a lot of tricks in up their sleeve. I think that would be uh, that be fireworks. I think. Yeah, um, I'm I, I'm of a similar opinion again. I think Makachev is in the running for that fight. Unfortunately, with Makachev, he's had a couple of pullouts of late, which just for my own, I don't I don't like picking him in a fight. I just want to see him fight now again. No matter who mm. it's against, what when you're when you're going moving up that division, though, I want to see, I suppose, the likes of Hooker in there with someone that when they sign on the dotted line that they're going to show up on the night. And that's not a knock on on Makachev. Just when mm. when when you get excited about a fight, it's a fight you you want that it's definitely going to happen. Um, and there's a fight coming up between Benil Dariush and Diego Ferreira, and both mm. guys are on a tear. Both guys are kind of. 
the lesser spoken dangers in that division for me. And I think the winner of that will be a very tough matchup for uh, Dan Hooker next. Yeah, that would be a, that, I think Ben, I know we're going to speak about that, but my pick, I'll be picking Darius and that. I'm a huge fan of Darius. I think he's yeah. super well rounded. You know, when he, when he loses, he, he's winning the fight all along, it seems, and then he just gets cracked. Like the Edson Barbosa is a fantastic yeah. uh, example exactly. of that. He's, he's great everywhere. Um, so f- I think, you know, again, the man on a tear, he gets the win over Freira. They'll want to push him on. And, and I don't want to see Hooker as, as the gatekeeper as no. such, but he kind of seems like he's going to be in that role next. But that's um, where he's got to go next. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, you know, but uh, do you like the Ferguson-Hooker fight? Would you like to see that? I think Ferguson, again, I suppose they're both off two losses now. It makes mm. sense to a certain extent. But for me, I want to see Ferguson and RDA next. I think RDA is kind of, he's the sleeper in that top six or seven that nobody's talking about mm. when they're making up their dream Grand Prix and all this that's been yeah. going on back and forth. And RDA seems to be the forgotten man. I think now's the time to reintroduce RDA's name into that. And I, I think Tony and RDA is a good fight. Yeah. Um, they're, they've tried to make RDA and Makachev a lot, but yeah, the yeah. two guys, you know, you're talking about like pullouts and things like that. Both of them are kind of prone to that at times. So, you know, maybe they'll want to stick with that, or maybe they're just fed up and trying to make that match up. But you know, yeah. there's there's some good um, and, and great call in the sense of nobody's talking about RDA. RDA is former champ 155, and I think him when he went up to 170 he had some success. But he's a natural 155er. He's a big 155er. Yeah. But I think he he gets a couple of fights, a couple of good performances. He's right up there in the mix. I, I'm looking forward to seeing him back and. In um, in, in uh, he's in his prime in my opinion. He still has a lot of great fights ahead of him. So, and then you've got DS to come back. The one fifty five pound division is nuts. It's yeah. fucking bananas. Nuts. But anyway, who we who we talking about? A, a hooker? Yeah. <laughs> I got a pick. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with um. I think they're gonna give him an up and comer like a Darius. But I think they're going to probably give him if if they don't match Makachev and RDA again. I think they're going to give him Makachev. But I'm hoping they'll give him Ferguson. But I'm gonna I, I predict it'll be a Makachev hooker fight. Yeah, and we are going to move on to Mr. McGregor next. And what is next for him? First off, on the performance, obviously a teammate of yours, and it's tough to see him go out like that. But what did you make of the opening stance? Do you think there was too much um, emphasis put on a, a being? A lot of people have talked about his own stance and footwork. Do you think there was too much emphasis to go out and make it a boxing stylistic matchup? Um. I just think that kind of uh, Connor is very, uh, very free in there. So when he mm. sees something, he'll, he'll, you know, he's the best at, at, at picking his shots and his shot selection is phenomenal. And he, he, he could see openings and he was getting success with his hands. So I think, yes, he put more emphasis then on, on landing those shots. And beforehand, he was talking about like uh, sitting down on his punches more. And in order to sit down on your punches, you got to be a bit more rooted to the floor. So I think that forward, that, that his, um, his uh, weight been on that front foot, looking for them power shots was uh, was probably, you know, there more so than regular fights where he was spinning a lot and throwing his kicks. So, but I thought it was a great performance. He looked very very good in there. It's just those calf kicks they are debilitating. They they really wear on a, on a guy. And um, I, but trust me, he'll he'll learn he'll learn from that. He's excellent at at uh, at evaluating his his wins and his losses. So. I remember he had this, um, I can't remember who he fought. Oh, Bushinger, one of my yeah. favorite knockouts of all time. And I remember he took, he took, uh, that was when he became double champ, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. And this highlight reel knockout, unbelievable. But he was, uh, I remember, I think it was John that was telling me that he got hit with a, he got hit with a jab in that fight. One jab, and it was in his head for like weeks after evaluating it and, you yeah. know, breaking it down. So you can bet your ass that he's going to be working really hard on, on, um, like avoiding those leg kicks from now on and, and working on that. But, um, you know, I thought it was, great. it was a good performance right up till he couldn't get that leg going again. I'm looking forward to whoever he's fighting. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing a, a, a read. Um, you know, we're refreshed and ready to go again, Connor. I think he, like his preparation was phenomenal. He was in a great yeah. mindset. Everybody was excited for it. Just the performance didn't match the where we wanted him to get. But, you know, for his ne- who who do you think he's going to get next? Who do you think they're going to match him up with? And what do you think of his performance? Um, for me, next before I get into the performance, I I think it has to be Diaz. 
I think with the talks of Diaz going back to 55, the talks of that they're going to make it an, uh, an interesting match for Diaz where there could be title implications with a big victory. I think the suggestion there that it was maybe going to be Gaethje. But with Connor's loss, I, I, I don't think there's been a more appropriate time, nor will there ever again be a more appropriate time to run back that trilogy fight. Um, So I, I just see it being Diaz next. As for the performance, I, I, I do think being being uh, inactive has played a factor a little bit. I know, like you say, it, it, he has been... His camp was probably the best one he's had in a long, long time. But I, I think when you're going in against a fighter, and I saw a stat recently that Conor McGregor's had 40 seconds in the octagon since uh, since his fight against Khabib. And in that time, Dustin Poirier has had 80 minutes of octagon time. And there's just a phenomenal chasm of a difference there. So not that, I'm, not I'm, that I'm McGregor's ever going to be... Sorry? I thought it would have been longer. I'm sure Poirier didn't he not do 25 with... Eighty, eight zero. Eighty. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. I heard you wrong. Yeah, 80, eighty minutes. Wow. Yeah. So it's a wow. huge difference, and I do think that plays a factor. Not that Connor's ever going to be uncomfortable in there, but I, I just think the first time how he caught Dustin was because he made him uncomfortable from the get go. This time, I don't, I don't think he was going to go in there, and I don't think there's anything he could say pre-fight or anything he could do in the first minute that was going to make Dustin uncomfortable in there. I thought Dustin was very uncomfortable. I thought he looked very uncomfortable in stages. He mm. was backpedaling, which was part of his game plan, yes. But there were shots where he was, or feints where he was flinching. He looked uncomfortable from the get-go. But I think Dustin, and he says this himself, uh, that he hates every bit about fighting except for the fight itself. Yeah. So you know that these things build up. But I think that every shot that he landed, every leg kick that he landed, his confidence just built and built and built and built. And then he went back to doing what he does probably better than anyone uh, in mixed martial arts. Is that technical brawling style of his is of hooks and rolls, and he's so good at it. He's he's a, an excellent killer instinct, and you know he's had it since day one. And when he, he when he knew that he had Conor Herb that leg kick, he he really applied that pressure and and, and put him away. Yeah, it's a it's it was a tough it was a tough one to watch. But I, I'm, I'm more confident than, than ever of how, how well he'll bounce back. But I hope it's not against Diaz. I'm probably the only one who thinks this, but I don't want it because I'd love to see Connor bounce back quick. I'd love to see him in yeah. there in the next, you know, couple of months. Yeah. And I think, you know, you have Diaz. I love Diaz. He's, you know, I, I, what, what a man, what a fighter, etc. But this is something that's going to drag on. You know yeah. what I mean? Contract negotiations and certain terms and all that will take forever to come around in my opinion uh, okay. it just seems that way for me as a teammate but also as a fan I want to see him back in there straight away I'd love to see a rematch but yeah. maybe they won't give him the rematch but give him Gaethje they've been talking you know Gaethje's been running his mouth and I think Connor I Connor, I just think for a man who gets hit so much uh, Justin I think it's knocked out very quick yeah. um, I'd like to see that fight I think Tony Ferguson and Connor will be a good fight. They've had back and forwards and they've, they've had history there as well. There's loads of great fights to give them. So if I had to you push know, you so. for a pick? Uh, well, what I want is a rematch. What I want is a rematch with um with with uh with, with Poirier. But yeah, well, uh, you know, the way t- I would have said someone like Diaz. I would have said Diaz, but the way things are kind of unfolding I wouldn't be surprised to see a Gagey fight but I'm going to go as a, as a prediction with, with Connor Diaz tree. perfect and just before we let you go we are going to pick one fighter each from the, the rest of the card assess their performance a little bit and give a quick pick on who we believe will be next for them for me the standout performance outside of the main and the co-main event was Marina Rodriguez in the strawweight division moving up to number 6 and Amanda Rivas was a a, a, hot, a hot contender in that division. Pardon the, the, the pun there with the hot, but um, she, was, <laughs> she, she was a contender in that division. But the momentum here now goes to Rodriguez. And you would hope that even though she's ranked six, she'd be getting somewhere close to a number one contender fight next. Now, we know that mm. Whaley is either fighting Rose Nami Yunus if she'll take the fight or Carla Esparza if she doesn't. So uh, I imagine the two of those are kind of waiting out to see what's next. I would actually like to see Marina Rodriguez 
go in there against Yan Shuanan in a kind of a, a yeah. contender fight there. It'd be a great fight on the feet. I just think uh, I think it'd be a good one to see next. Who who do you think yeah. next for Rodriguez? I don't know. Like with a performance like that, you know, when I look at the the strawweight division, um, you can't look past those that number one, uh, one, two, and three spots. They're they're mm. absolutely exceptional, and you could see those three just battling out like a. Like um, just we've had say in the heavyweight division at the minute in boxing, you've got Fury, you've got Wilder and uh, Joshua. You know yeah. those three, you can see them fighting loads and loads. And but in the in the past, you would have had like um, uh, the Tommy Hearns, th- those three guys. But like with these three, you could see them fighting it again and again. And like maybe Rodriguez and Waterson. I know Waterson is ranked below, but yeah. she's a big name. Um, and uh, Waterson's coming off a win, isn't she? Off, off against Hill last. Is that correct? Angela Hill, yes. Uh, I think I, 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 I'm not sure on this now, but I think Watterson might be matched. I can't be a hundred percent though. Yeah, well, look at even though Marina Rodriguez, she is ranked above Watterson. Um, she you can see it spots. being someone like Watterson, yeah. Yeah, because right in regarding skill versus skill, like it's she's she's phenomenal. She showed what she's all about, but Watterson is a name, and I think maybe beating a name rather than someone that's maybe a uh, that's you know on par in regard to skill level i think might do more for her profile and getting uh and getting a belt yeah. and getting a crack for a belt um yeah so look at it's a very very good division it's a very, it's one of the most exciting divisions you know and uh but look to be honest the, the Weili zhang uh joanna and, and uh, rose the, the three of them even if you had if you if you wiped the rest of the division out and had those three fight again and again and again you're gonna, you're gonna have a <laughs> you're still gonna be entertained so yeah <laughs> Absolutely. So it's great to see like some Marina Rodriguez making huge steps and, and making that climb. So, but yeah, look at when I look at it, you've, you've Claudia Galdea below her. That'd be, you know, one to, to watch as well. Yeah. But she's she's having to go back down after her last performance in regard to the rankings. Now, I don't get too much of a shade about rankings. So, yeah, if I had to pick one for her, I'd like to see Michelle Waterson and her battle it out. Perfect. And for your pick on who you, you think looked impressive on the card and who you would give next for them. Yeah, I was very ha- I was very um, impressed with Joanne Calderwood. We spoke on the podcast about her, you know, letting letting it go. Yeah. Um, at times, maybe her performances, um, she it looked like she held back a little bit. Yeah. And in this one, she didn't. You know, she done everything bar get the get the finish. I don't know. It, it, she it was a great contest. You know, Jessica I done phenomenal as well. You have to have two people in it to make it a good fight. But I thought Joanne was very much in control. Um, her striking looked very good very loose her conditioning looked great because that was a high intense high intense fight um and her takedown defense looked excellent as well uh yeah. but she let it go Paul. you know what i mean she wasn't too cagey she was throwing lots of unorthodox techniques again she was she was she was mixing it up so i was really happy to see her get getting the win and i'd like to see her i'd like to say her taking a big step up um i don't find that the the flyweight division is as stacked as the strawweight division you know yeah. but she is ranked sixth um, I know she has lost to uh, Shuk. Oh, I'm so bad at pronouncing her name. Shukagan. Shukagan. Yeah, Shukagan. She's lost to Shukagan, so like a rematch there. But you know, I don't know. It's hard to. It's hard to know. Maybe, maybe Andrade next. I know yeah. it's a big jump, but like I think she went out. She didn't get the finish, but she went out and she really put it on all the line. Put it on the line, and those kind of performances deserve. Uh, big rewards. I think a, a a rank number one or two next for JoJo would be a, a great move. Well, well, who would you like to see her fight next? Yeah, for me, so I, I think it actually benefits JoJo that the division isn't the strongest because I hope that they're not going to make the same mistake they made with the 135 pound division because if you go back, there was two contenders there coming through in the 35 division. The names have gone out of my head now, this will tell you. But they had two contenders coming through and the two of them on the same card fought against Holly Holm and Jermaine Durandamy respectively. And of course, Holly Holm and Jermaine Durandamy won and they were the last two people to fight Nunes at that time at 35. So they essentially on one card wiped out their contenders and all that was left at 35 was a rematch. That's the reason we've seen Nunes fight at, at 45 last and she's fighting at 45 again coming up. So I'm hoping they don't make the same mistake at 25 and what I can see happening is 
Jojo versus Lauren Murphy. Lauren okay. Murphy is ranked number four because I, I reckon it's uh, uh, Jessica Andrade is fighting Three. Valentina next. And the winner yeah. of Lauren Murphy versus Jojo has a serious argument then for to be fighting for the title. Yeah. That's a great call. I changed my mind, actually. Because <laughs> Jennifer <laughs> Moya and Chukagian have already fought for the belt. Yes. It just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And people, unless it's um, it's unless it's a title fight where it was damn close or there was, there was almost an upset. People don't want to see it. They're not they're not married to a rematch very quickly. And either are yeah. matchmakers. Yeah, I've got to look at like um, every time you lose a fight or every time I've you know won a fight, I've been asked to rematch. And every time I've lost a fight, I've asked to rematch. And yeah, yeah. matchmakers are like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And then they don't give a bollocks about doing that. Anything. <laughs> they just want to see next, the next step, the next step. So. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it's the same in that division. But yeah, you're right. You don't want to wipe out too many contenders too soon. You want to keep the the interest, the, the division interesting. So, and I just think Calderwood with the performance deserves a big shot. Now maybe leapfrog two or three spots. And actually, when I look at it, Lauren Murphy, that would be a great. Lauren Murphy's ranked three. Yeah. So that would be a, a great fight. A great fight. Let's let's see how Shevchenko and and Drad how that plays out. And then you have is the next one waiting in the wings. Then from the winner of uh, Calderwood and Murphy. So. Makes all the sense in the world, Paul. Yeah, very good. On that note, we are going to leave you until next week. Of course, next week we have fights back. So we will be predicting against for the Overeem and Volkov match and that card. Uh, Give us a like and subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all social medias at the MMA Opinion and give Brian a follow on social medias as well at Brian Moore MMA. Thank you very much.